Hello, everyone. You're welcome to another great session in this channel. I remain your host, Mercy. It's a great pleasure to always create content on this platform. If you're a returning subscriber, I really appreciate you. If you're new on this platform, this is Lawyers in Hub. It's a platform where we teach law, we share experiences aimed at helping you becoming a better lawyer. We bring in people to share their experiences, all aimed at helping you in your career path to become an excellent lawyer, to become an excellent law student, paraventure you a student. We are poised to helping the growth of the legal education in Nigeria and in Africa. It's a great pleasure to have a wonderful guest today. And you know what? We are looking at a very important topic. Uh, we're looking at practicing in Canada as a Nigerian lawyer. We are looking at how do you practice as a Nigerian lawyer in diaspora in Canada, using Canada as a point of call. What do you need to do? How do you do go, go through the requalification process? A lot of people are relocating to Canada and as, as lawyers, they don't know how to go about it, what they need to do. So um, our discussion is centered around this topic and I want you to just listen. And I know you're going to get one or two things that will help you. Per adventure, you're traveling or you know someone who wants to relocate to Canada is a lawyer and uh, what they need to do to progress. I have a wonderful guest today, Barisu Goma Uchemwa, a lovely, lovely, lovely friend and uh, a colleague. So she's here to do justice to this topic. Hi, Goma, you're welcome. Hi, Mercy. Hello. It's so nice, so nice to connect with you facially. I know we do a lot of chats and so nice to be on your Lawyers Info Hub. So it's a great pleasure, yeah. and I'm sure that it's going to be very informative for lots of Nigerians and um, people already here in Canada, but I haven't even started the process. So yeah, I'm sure everybody's going to get something from today's meeting. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you now. I lost you for some seconds. Yeah, sorry for that glitch. Yeah, the glitch. I'm sorry for that. That's so please, can you introduce yourself? Okay, yeah. so like you rightly said, my name is Goma Ochenwa. I'm a dual licensed lawyer. So I have my practice, um, or I've been licensed in Nigeria, I should say. And I'm currently a barrister and solicitor here in Ontario, Canada. Um, I have special areas of specialization here in Canada. So I do real estate. I do estate planning and wills. I do mental health. And I also do immigration, some parts of immigration, I would say, um, and also business. So these are my areas of specialization. But my core focus area here is real estate law and wills. Wow, yeah, so beautiful. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. So for a young lawyer, for a, an old lawyer, a law student who intends to settle in Canada and is a Nigerian, um, what, and they are coming over, what do you think are the necessary things they need to put in place before they come over to help them with the ease of pre-qualification? Um, that's a great question question so if you intend to relocate or come into canada and practice law okay because a lot of people that are lawyers end up coming into canada and um get worked up with other things and don't choose to practice but yes but well, if you intend to practice law and you're still in nigeria the very most important thing you yeah. should start doing is get ready because um a lot of the very beginning stages you can actually do from nigeria now, um, so, okay. of course, when you're done in Nigeria, you've gone to the law school, you're a licensed lawyer in Nigeria, so um, you can apply, and everything is actually done online. You don't need to be physical at that point, yeah. okay? You can apply for okay. something called an assessment, okay? Now, this assessment, yeah. basically, they need to make sure that a Nigerian um, certification as a lawyer is equivalent to that called yes. something um, called a JD here the, in Canada, so which is um, okay. almost equivalent to being called as a lawyer here in Canada. So okay. you would need to apply for transcripts from um, your 
university and also from law school. So um, because you cannot send it directly to the, the, the board that takes care of that is called the National Accreditation um, the national certification accreditation, sorry, that starts with that process. So okay. it has to come directly from law school. So you have to, whatever the process is in Nigeria, you have to start that process and they send the um, transcripts to the NCA, that's the national um, certification accreditation. Now, the good thing yeah. about being a Nigerian is that we practice the common law in Nigeria, which is very similar to what is done yeah, yeah. here in Canada. What is so, exactly. Yeah. So once you get that assessed, um, depending on, um, I think generally for all lawyers um, in Nigeria, because most of us, are, but I've seen a few people, maybe depending on their performance in law school or your, based on your transcript, you could get more. So there are five minimum courses that you get. So even though you're a lawyer, you do have to pass this process, basically. So they give you five minimum courses okay. for you to write as exams before you can get your yeah. certificate of qualification. So your certificate of qualification okay. is equivalent to, it now brings you at par to um, being, having a licensed, um, recognized by Canada, basically, that you're a licensed lawyer, okay? okay. That you come to the first step. Okay. Yeah. So um, the five basic courses that you get is administrative law, constitutional law okay um, okay again okay all right so constitutional law there is um i've actually forgotten it six years or seven years ago yeah so there are three more no, professional ethics. yes yeah. professional ethics, ethics too i think yes professional ethics yeah um there are two more did i mention constitutional law it's i think about foundation Yes, yes, you you run law foundation. <laughs> yes, yes, law foundation and one more. So, so I've gotten some people. I've known some people that get yeah. even more than five. So they might add contract law. These are okay. the um, optional courses. Yeah, but most Nigerians get the basic okay. five. Now, that's just the first step. Um, so moving on, um, you have. It's up to you on how you want to take the exam, basically. For each of them, you have up to a maximum of three attempts to write the exam and um, pass. For each of the courses? Your, oh, okay. Each of the courses, yes. Each of the courses. So... Okay, each three attempts and eight of each, okay? Yes, yes. Based on your speed as well, it might, it, it, everything depends on, on the individual. Some people have taken the five courses at a stretch yeah. and passed it. Some pass some and don't pass some. Some break it. I take one because it's taking three times a year. So you just choose random okay. if you're taking the two of them at the same time or five of them or one of them. It's up to you. Not until you have a pass in each of the five um, examinations. So, yeah. Then Amazing. once you pass it, you get something called your certificate of qualification. Once you oh, get that, okay. you're not oh, a lawyer okay. yet, just so you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're not a lawyer yet. It's just, like I said, it brings you apart to the Canadian standard that you went to their university. Because even them, when, yes, they're, when, yes. when you go through um, their university, you get an LLB. That's what yes. it is. You still have to go to, yes. for our own, you go to the Nigerian law school, correct? Before you can law school. Yeah. To that. Yes. So yes, it just brings you up to that status that, okay, you have an LLB now, basically. But it's called Certificate of Qualification. So, yeah. um, did you want me to keep going on on the process, or you wanted to come in? Now, so, let, let me ask you. Now, let me let me now ask you. These exams, you say you um, they do it like three times a year. Mm -hmm. So, one can be can be able to achieve the five courses in one year, right? Absolutely. Like Depending I said, your... three times a year, you can even write the five of them in one sitting, in one month, and pass it. It depends on you. In one month. Okay. Yeah. Three times a year, in the month of the year you choose to write, you can write the five courses. 
Okay. Does it make sense? So um the exams yeah, are taking, it does, it does. It does, right? The exams are taking um they might have changed it. Sorry, I had I wrote mine quite a bit, but yeah, March, okay, um August and November. Now, March, August, okay. November, in March, you have every day of the week they have the exams. It's written in, in, in a space of one week. So if you choose to write your four courses, okay. you can write your four courses in the month of March. Sorry, five. You write your five courses in the month of March. Okay. That means you're sitting for exam every day of the week, every day for that week, depending okay. on the schedule or timetable. So someone like me, I'll use myself as, a, as an example. I wrote mine in a space of one year. So I started with um, okay. one course in the month of March, okay? And then okay. wrote the second one. I took two in the month of August. Okay. And then I took the last two in the month of November. So I wrote mine in the space of one November. year. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, now, this exam, is it something you can teach yourself, read by yourself? Uh, are there um, kind of training or uh, like a, a remedial course kind of uh, teaching or you just self-taught? Uh, is there um, some people that do kind of training for people who are just coming in? Is this something you can study by yourself? Is this something you mm -hmm. need to go uh, for mm -hmm. maybe what they call um, some kind of a course, coursework mm -hmm. or kind of a training? Is this something you can do by yourself? Yeah, it's absolutely something you can do. So the NCA is that is something you can do by yourself, but it's not something I would recommend. Even if you're doing by yourself, the key to it is networking. You really have to network because um, they don't provide okay. you with anything. There's no material that you're providing. You're paying for these exams, you're registering, but they're not getting any materials. The only way you can know what to buy, of course, they will let you know the syllabus. There's a syllabus that tells you, okay, administrative law, this is all that it covers. And it's you go out there, okay. find the book, and they recommend books. They won't tell you this is the book. They can recommend up to six to seven books for you. Yeah. So okay. it's up to you to know what book you want. And you can only know this either from people that have written the exams or from networking Before. with other people that they know that, okay, see, yes, six, seven books. You don't want to read six, seven books for one course. Like you just want to focus on what okay. you think is maybe most important for the course. Yeah. So they don't have any structured um, tutoring, but like I said, the okay. key first way you can you can you can groom yourself you can actually read up on your own answer they have past questions that you can go through to help okay. you mm. now they also Sorry. have private people that are tutoring basically so someone like me i'm a lawyer now i can choose to start my business by having a private sessions with a with a couple of people and they pay me to tutor to tutor you for the because i've passed okay. through that process you get so but there's no school or there's no structure to tell you that um okay this is what and what you have to pay you have to do about it. some people study on their own like me yeah. my process i studied i didn't pay any tutor to study yeah, so I studied on my own, but the good thing was I networked. We were like a group of five or six. We're reading every day. We're answering past questions every day. You get it's just like the way you do it probably in the in, in university. So yes, you go to school, but yeah, you okay. have a group of friends that you're meeting and you're studying and you're practicing questions with. Yeah, but we were not paying ourselves. It was we were all in the game, all of us needed to pass. You get so. Everybody was doing their part studying, and then we meet in the evenings and we discuss. And one thing about the NCA exam is it is an open book exam. When I heard it was an open book exam, the I was so book. excited. Oh, it's like you have your books right by your side and yeah. you're writing the exams. But I tell you, it's one of the toughest exams yeah. you can write because even though your books are right beside you, you have time constraint. You're limited to time. So they could ask you a question. And it's not um multi, it's not OBJ, basically. It's um theory. You have to write. So you have to write. So they ask you a question. You're trying to remember 
okay, it's in this material. <laughs> Where exactly do I open or flip to? So that's why when you're studying, you're doing a lot of tag the tagging. That's why I learned my tagging. You're tagging all your chapters. You want to tap tag each topic or whatever that you think, and then. When the question, when you're reading the question, you're trying to remember or go to where you can get the answer from. But by the time you're doing all of this, your time is going, <laughs> you get. So, so yeah. But the good thing again about NCA is you just need a 50%. You just need a 50%. That's a pass. You just need a 50% to be able to pass your, um, to be able to pass the exams. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um for from what you have said, it is something you can do yourself. It's also something you need to network with people who have uh, passed the exam, you know, for you to understand the approach and how mm -hmm. to go about it. Being an open book exam, or like what is obtainable in Nigeria, Nigeria, we don't run the open book exam. So running an open book exam means you need to know at least a bit of everything, you know, <laughs> because the, the questions can come anywhere. The bleak is much. The network is not too good today. Can, can you it. hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, the network is uh, kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay, let's now go to, um, have you obtained your NCA, your license? Then what next? Yeah, so like once you pass your mandatory courses from NCA, you get your certificate of qualification. Now, with your certificate of qualification, you need to go through the licensing, um, the barrister licensing process. Now, that depends on where you want to practice. So in Nigeria, once you're called to the bar, you can practice anywhere in Abuja, in Lagos, in Cam in um Imo states, whatever. But in Canada, Canada is such a huge country with different um cultures and different provinces, so you have to decide where you want yeah. to practice. Now, I I live okay, in Ontario, so Sorry. Sorry, you said something. I could Hello? um the line. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. I think she has a very poor network, but um Wait for that glitch. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Uh, the letter says it's not too good. Yeah. Okay. So you were we were talking about after getting your license, you're done with your NCA assessment. You've yes. got your license. What next? That is where we were. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what next is basically where do you want to practice? We have about 10 provinces here in Canada. Ontario, Saskatchewan, wherever. So depending on where you want to practice, you want to do your licensing exams there, okay? So I live in Ontario and I have to stay in Ontario. So I decided to take the barristers, Ontario okay. barristers licensing exams there because okay. as an Ontario lawyer, I cannot practice in Calgary. I cannot practice another province. So another province. Calgary is a different province. Yeah. Yes. So each um, province has their own peculiar exactly. way of Each well, province okay. has their License own peculiar okay. processing um, procedure. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I'm going to be speaking specifically for Ontario because um, I don't, I even though I have like an idea of what some other provinces do, but I'm not the expert on that because, yeah, it might differ from what I say. So I'll speak for Ontario for now. But basically for Ontario, you have to go through um, two, like I said, barristers and solicitors um, is what they call it here. So the first thing they actually do is to 
you once once they receive your certificate of qualification, which is the NCA that you've done, yeah. I think, then you've done. you have to write the barrister's exams and the solicitor's exams. Okay. So okay, the barrister was, exam and the solicitor exam. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you write it and you have to pass it basically. Now, um, passing the barrister's exam is about in, in the barrister's exam, there's like five courses in it that you write, and then the solicitor's okay. exam too is about five courses in it that you write, so it's mm -hmm. 10. Do you understand that point? 10, ten exam, no, 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 yes. it's um, so, ten the subjects. so basically, I'll explain better, okay. So there are just two exams, okay. barrister's exams and solicitor's exams. And solicitor's exams. Now, okay. for the barrister, there are five courses in it. So when you get the barrister's exam, you'll be writing five courses in one day. They call it barrister's exams. So you're writing exams. five courses okay. in one day. So in it's not day. that you okay. are split. They don't split it or break it. So it consists split of... Um, subject that after that one you go to the next subject you go to the next subject and then next subject exactly yeah you get that point to that point well, there's five different courses right yes five different courses yes okay so five different courses make up the barrister exam five different courses makes up exam. the barrister's exam yeah okay. yeah okay. um the good Okay, I think I should have mentioned to for because um, we're centered on Nigeria, the NC exams you can take it online. Okay, you can take it online, and um, you don't have to actually okay. be in Canada to write it. But there are several technical requirements to fulfill that. But when it comes to the barrister and solicitor's exams, prior to COVID, yeah. we're now post COVID. Yeah, prior to COVID. It's strictly a press in person exam, basically. But due to COVID, it became online. Yes, COVID. Yes, it became online. Okay. But you still cannot write it outside Canada. You have to be in Canada. Be in Canada to write that exam. Yeah. In so online. Of course, before COVID. COVID, it was in person, but after COVID, you cannot do it online. But hello, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so you said post COVID, before COVID, pre COVID, you was in person. Then after COVID, it's now online. But the requirement no. that you must be in Canada to write it. No, 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 no. Post COVID is back to in person. Okay, what it's say? now in person. Post okay, pre COVID it was okay. Now it's in, in person. person. Yes. Okay. Okay. It was the COVID that made the change. Okay. okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So. So you also like did me. mention that your NCA you can also do it online. The yes. First part NCA is the NCA's assessment. Mm -hmm. you can do it online correct okay okay yes but it's different okay. now for canada for bar barristers you have to be in person here in canada now to in take the barristers yeah. yes and you must be in canada correct yes okay okay yeah so, so the solicitor's exam yeah um, solicitor's exam is the same thing in person and there are multiple choice questions it's okay. not like the open book for nca it's multiple choice question Okay. Yes. Okay. There are multiple choice questions, about 240 questions. So 240. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now so ca can you choose can you choose the barristers and leave the solicitors or must you do it together? No, you can choose one and leave the other, but you must write both of them eventually. Okay, okay, okay. You must write the both of them eventually. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So this is the process. Now we're on the process to become an Ontario licensed lawyer. So you have the barrister and so this is the time to write. You also have to get something. You have to also get um articled. 
Now, um, okay. there are three steps to that. So basically, articling just means that you have to be employed in a law office. In a law you, firm. Yes, in a okay. law firm where you gain experience. Yes. You understand? And then, More like an internship, right? Exactly. Yes, yes. More like an internship. Yes, more now, like an internship. Okay. You're either doing an article or you're doing and um you're exempting from article so you can actually exempt you can be exempted from article and i'll tell you why or how you Articling. can be exempted from article okay exempted yes okay. or you can choose to get the lpp which is called the law practice program okay so okay. now yeah you are in the midst of writing so if you pass your barrister's exams and solicitor's exams, you cannot yes. be called to bar, except you go through to except you go through any of these three processes, which is article, okay, exemption, or LPP. Exemption or the law practice program. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, personally, I got an exemption. Okay. If you can okay. sure that you have practiced law and they only accept common law jurisdictions, which Nigeria falls into. Jurisdiction. Yes, common law jurisdictions. Okay. Yeah, if you can show that you practiced law for at least 10 months from a common law jurisdiction ten within months. the last oh. five months, ten five months. years. Okay. So I'll say that again. If okay. you can show. Yeah, if you can show that you have practiced law for 10 months, in a common law jurisdiction yes you're qualified for an exemption exactly okay, okay. yes okay. but that of course they won't take you by your words that oh i practiced law for I practiced before. Months. they okay. won't take you for your words so what they do they would need a a, a your curriculum vitae they'll need a referral they'll contact okay. your law office in that in that um country where you said you practice law country yes to confirm yeah. It's more like a referral, it's just like you're telling somebody is your reference. They will contact them to confirm that you did practice law in your country. Okay. Okay. Yes. And then when they confirm that and this real um you're eligible for an exemption, you have to now take a three-day course. Are you clear okay. to that point? Yes, you're going to take a three-day course. Yeah, to the point that course. Okay, yeah. after they have satisfied that you have practiced for ten months, and that they reach out to your referral or your that someone to confirm in that law office you said you have practiced. Yes. Then you will do a three days course. Exactly. Okay? Yeah, it's called PCPO. Yeah. Um, it's a I can't even remember okay, the full meaning, but it's PCPO that it's called, yes. The nah. three-day course is just going to summarize everything that you, in preparation like for you to become a lawyer in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's okay. the exact. I, I just took like that a part. refresher course to say, okay, an abridged refresher exactly. course of this is how it works here. Okay, okay yes okay so that was the part i took yeah. so i got now, i get it up to that point okay yes. yes if you don't go that part you do an article okay an article like i said is like intention okay. okay now if you don't take that if you don't yes. go that part you do an lpp which is the law practice program it's like a school practice program. Of, yes. yes it's a school that um you register you pay for you attend classes and you write an exam yes exam yes so the school is for i think um six to eight months that you right you uh, attend months. the school okay. yes now yes. So, so for the acne article how, how long does that one stay for the article yeah you have 10 months minimum of 10 months is it 10 months? okay so you're actually within 10 months oh okay. yes and that will also involve um, wherever you are doing the article for them to like write a report to say you did it and you did well, kind of, right? Yeah. And not all law offices can 
article a student you have you, you you have to go through the law society um of ontario to get your law firm to take articling students because it's really tedious there are students they're oh. training them so you give reports you're sending them on assignment you're oh. sending it to lso that okay this person is performing this person wow. is this and all of that yeah so it's um yeah. you cannot just even like myself, I have a part, I'll have a law office, but I cannot take an article student because I'm not accredited to take one yet. You need to have a certain number oh, okay. of years. Yes, a certain number of years you must for have you to, to be able, to, able, to, to, be able to article as students, a student. Yeah. No, okay. It's it just similar to say that um, MBA, which is the professional body, accrediting some law firms. Mm -hmm. to take some law students or some lawyers in training okay so not all law firms can um, um take in articling students just Correct. accredited law firm exactly approved. yeah so i get it to that point i get it to that point okay mm. and the article lasts for 10 months yes yes okay so, okay. so you can proceed yeah exactly so um yeah you, if you're lucky and you get a big law firm they will pay you because you're working it's like a job so you get paid okay. while you article some people um okay. just get something called transportation while some people don't yeah some people don't pay at all yeah, you just do all the work, but you don't get paid. So a lot of people that article like to look for law offices that can okay. they can get paid. But if you are focused, which is what you should be, focused on experience, that shouldn't be the priority. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, now, wow. so at this point, when you're done with all this, then you can then be called to the bar, right? Yes, at this point, you have to be officially called to the bar ceremony. Yes, and then you become a lawyer in Canada. Wow. <laughs> I must say, it is not an easy journey then. It's and it's not for the faint-hearted. Definitely not. It's not for the faint-hearted. I summarized it like this, oh, but truly, in reality it's a lot of process like you have to be mentally and physically ready because canada is very yeah. it's a new environment for you apart from all of this you're looking to get more because all these are so heavy let, let things you're say, looking for yes. <laughs> so let's you're probably let's working within, within three years yeah, some people like happening. that go so let's say within, within three years no three years is exaggerated really I mean, some people are really good really? at getting it within two years you can get it in two years okay let's just say two years minimum minimum some people take as long as five years <laughs> to get it yeah but remember okay when you start the licensing process you have to finish all of this within five years See, three years or five years, you, wow. you must finish it within a certain number of time. If it elapses, you're going to start all over again and get reassessed with NCA. Wow. So all this process, you must be able to do it within five years when once you start. Yes. If, if not, you delay all over again. For, so, for whatever reason, yes. Your NCA would have not your nc i'm sorry your barristers yeah if you've got your certificate of qualification you've gotten it yeah you've gotten it i'm sorry okay now, it, you start let, let's say for example i start writing my barristers exams okay i pass my barristers exams and for some reason i get pregnant i'm nursing my child and i decide to hold on let okay. me just breathe and do my motherly duties take care right? of yourself <laughs> exactly yeah and then i start and i'm articling okay after that i choose to article after articling there's no you there's no order you can do your exams first you can article first there's no order okay you choose to do it well however suits you and i finish articling articling is okay. like another I, I, remember i've written the exam i took one year off 
to babysit my baby and then i had to cook for another one yeah. year which is like 10 months that's three years gone already and i begin to write the solicitor yeah. exams and i fail it the first time i fail it the second time i've taken my time to breathe and it's five years already so what they do is your mm. articles of your your um articles as long as you finish your articles you won't need to do your article again but you have to go back and write barrister's okay. exams yeah they feel yeah. like you've lost that knowledge wow yeah hmm. <laughs> this is not a tea party then <laughs> yes yeah but, but but it's good you know information is power so that once you want to take this route you should be able to know what is in it for you how to go about it then since the nca is something you can do online so for a nigerian lawyer who wants to move to canada to start practicing the person can start with the nca so that by the time the person gets to canada it starts to face the uh the bike the bar exam yes. um so that way it will it kind of alleviate the stress and also cut short the timing exactly uh, since one part can be done online yeah so at least the person can start with the assessment getting your transcript and all of that now let's look at the costs as we round up let's look at the cost um is it very expensive at at each point you make um what's the average cost like for at least the basics for the nca and the uh, barristers and solicitors exam Okay, if you're a, let me use the word straight A student. If there are no chances of you repeating an exam, okay, that means you're passing your exam at one attempt, right? Without failing any. <laughs> exactly, okay. without failing any. Okay, so right from this set goal, you start paying to apply. Once you apply for assessment, you start paying. So for the NCA, I would say, and if you're giving the five basic courses, you need to budget at least $2,500. Okay? $2,500 Canadian dollars. Yes, Canadian dollars. Okay? Each exam costs for Each of the exams are... Yeah, each of the exam costs like $400 plus HST. Mm -hmm okay okay yeah so minimum of two five if you would spend more but truly but budget minimum of two five you spend more so minimum of two thousand five hundred Canadian dollars correct wow so for every, every time one uh, uh, someone fails that is more money right exactly because you need to register again and all of that and pay the exam fees mm. yes uh it's not funny it's not funny okay um that aside so uh the barristers and the solicitors exam how much does that one cost for the barristers and solicitors exam you need to budget a minimum of four thousand dollars canadian four hundred canadian dollars four thousand four thousand four thousand <laughs> okay four thousand ah it's not a joke four thousand <laughs> and um <laughs> and this is you just become a lawyer you're paying time. about two thousand five hundred every year to maintain your license when now as a lawyer i okay, pay two thousand five hundred every okay, year to maintain every my year license. You, you renew your license right yes just like what we do here, like you pay your practicing fee, mm -hmm. renew your license, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's no so joke. So every year you pay like two thousand five hundred to make to renew your license. Yes, and that's just my license. Everybody here as a lawyer must have a law pro insurance. You must be insured as a lawyer, and that's about another one thousand okay. five hundred oh okay over here we do insurance too but many people don't take it uh, it's seriously. compulsory okay it's so you pay mm -hmm. you you pay your renewal mm -hmm. of your license fee 2500 then you do your 
insurance like 1500 that is every year every single is there year. a timeline for payment yes i have until march is there a timeline for payment yes i have until march 31st to pay my licensing fee for this year <laughs> so yes there's a timeline if you don't pay it you get suspended there's a timeline of course oh just like you pay on bar practicing uh you must pay before the 31st of of the year 31st of march the yeah, same thing is, this yeah. is this is good um yeah the, the internet is not friendly today but we are getting the information you renew your license for 2500 yeah mm -hmm. ah, it is well with us today with this internet <laughs> so yeah. i was saying um you renew your license for 2500 then the insurance for 1500 now i think this payment is just for ontario so other provinces also have their own fee right absolutely is it the same fee no it's not the same uh, they have yeah it's not the same wow yes <laughs> it could be you know, more i love the beauty of less. canada <laughs> i think i love the beauty of canada because uh, the issue of provinces so the way uh, the, the what works in Alberta cannot work in ontario what works in ontario cannot work in saskatchewan what like works in saskatchewan is different from what works in uh um you know the Nova other Scotia. provinces <laughs> so it's it just like you knowing where do you want to work practice now yeah. if for any reason maybe i'm moving from uh i'm moving from toronto to uh labrador so how do I do it? How do one move, moving from one province to the other, what do you do? Yes. So I'm already a licensed Ontario lawyer. I don't lose that except I don't pay my licensing fees or I'm in trouble and I'm suspended, Hello. whatever. Now I want to move to Newfoundland and Labrador. <clears throat> we started from the point that uh, you need your university and law school degree certificate the transcript to be sent to nca nca is a body that does the assessment to show that to assess whether you you your 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 training is akin to what is obtainable in canada now when they do the assessment you have been giving courses a minimum of five courses for you to take as a as in terms of exams so when they give you these five courses this is minimum it can also be more than five when you pass these courses you don't have your license to practice when you have this license to practice that doesn't mean you can start we've been caught the bar that's just stage one now for you now to be get called you do your exam which is could do the uh, you have to do the barristers exam and the solicitors exam and you didn't mention that the barristers exam is like doing five courses in a day that's the exam five subjects the exams will be written one day the solicitor's exam is a MCQ are about 240 questions of MCQ. Then you must pass them. So the beauty of this is that you there are multiple, you have multiple attempts. It's not like you pass it once and if you fail it, you're not going to pass it again. So you have like three attempts on each exam. So if you to get through to this beautiful to take you three years, fine. But if you set
<laughs> it's well. Uh, let's talk to love friendly today. Yeah, thank you for your time. Oh, I'm really grateful. Uh, let's talk is love friendly today. So I was saying that the beauty of all these exams is have different short activities, but eventually you fail. So you can do it three times. So when you're done with your barrister's exam, you pass it to pass a solicitor's exam, then the issue of articling. And you said that articling is more like you doing an internship in a law firm. And this, not all law firms can take articling students. There are law firms that have been licensed to take in articling students. So you do the articling for 10 months. Now, for example, for, for adventure, you have practiced in Nigeria and that you can prove that you have practiced at least 10 months. You bring in your CV, bring in a reference, um, uh, a referee wherein they can confirm that you <laughs> yeah, yeah so good. so i was saying that articling is more like an internship mm -hmm. and you have to do it for 10 months but if you can show that you have practiced law in your jurisdiction like nigeria is a common law jurisdiction akin to what is obtainable in canada they can you can be exempted from that yes then we talked about the issue of being called to the bar when you have done all this they are satisfied that you pass all your courses then you can be called to the bar and i'm sorry i should talk to you quickly sorry quickly before you can be license. called to the bar no, hello oh Hi, Bryce Obama. Yeah, sorry, I lost you. No, so I was so quickly. So, yes, I was trying to do a recap. You know, I know. So I was paying attention to all you were saying. Yeah, I was trying to okay. do. Okay, I, was, I, was to I, I just said that uh, beyond being called to the bar, you have to also be renewing your license every year. And for you, that is in Ontario, you pay like two thousand five hundred for your license every year, and also talk about insurance of like one thousand five hundred. And uh, we also did mention that these exams are not uh, very cheap. Uh, at least for the NCA, you can do like 2,500 Canadian dollars for the barristers and the solicitor, 4,500. It is not an easy thing. Uh, but I, I know that someone whose heart is set out to do this can achieve it. So um, I want to just I want to, to just round up at this point. But how is the um, Canadian Bar Association, the Nigerian Forum, how is it like? How, how how are they helping to help you know how are they putting things in place to help new immigrants like nigerian lawyers to get into the system because i know you hold a position in that association right yeah so i wanted to mention quickly too um i, I skip that before you can be called to um ontario bar you have to be deemed of good character okay. very important if you're not deemed of good character you even though you pass every processes, barristers licensing, you will not be called to the bar. Very important. Okay. Now, so um, we have several associations, um, but we have the one where I'm the general secretary, can it, the biggest one though, Canadian Association of Nigerian Lawyers. Um, what we do, we have a lot of mentoring sessions because even coming into uh, when you call to the bar, you do need mentoring to be able to, especially like me, I started my practice immediately. So a lot of people need help. They need um, guidance.
to be able to understand okay. the whole ball game differently. All the exams you've read, when you come into practice, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, we have mentoring sessions. We also do CPDs, continuous um, CPD. Oh, gosh, I've forgotten the full meaning of what CPD is, but you need these to be able to... Yeah maintain your license as well because the as a lawyer you need 12 okay. hours you need to attend 12 hours of cpd courses continuing education something like that so we hold cpds for lawyers in different areas of law that helps you to be able to maintain your license as a lawyer and um generally yeah most of these other associations the we some people hold tutoring sessions we we'll say tutoring sessions for people that are going through the process or we direct you to how to get tutoring help for people that, that yes yeah. yeah. so that's basically what we do as um canadian as the for the canadian association of nigerian lawyers here lawyers wow this is it's good it's good at least to have a safe landing of at least when you see people who have gone through it, you have this confidence, like, I can still go through it. And mm -hmm. for what the points you're talking about, in Nigeria here, we do what they call the CLE points, uh, continuing legal education, you know. Hmm, something uh, like that. It's expected that within the year of your practice, you should at least get more knowledge, participate in free webinars, so you can get this uh, uh, CLE points. You know, yes. but here, many people don't take it so seriously. It's like, what do I need it for? I'm happy that over there it is more, it is like uh, is it is a it is compulsory that you don't just uh, waste your legal year without gaining more knowledge. Yeah, yes. because, uh, you can't it, be when you, when you don't gain more knowledge. Yeah, you 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 go down, you depreciate. So yes. I'm happy so that that is compulsory. Very compulsory. Continuous yeah. professional yeah. development is what is called. Without hitting the twelve hours yeah. target, yeah. your your license is suspended. Have you seen? wow wow you know here we call it the, the continuing legal education all mm. these things are similar you know similar. but uh, people don't really take it so much with to, to heart because uh there's no <laughs> much um you know compulsion on the part of the leaders or uh when you know that you're not losing anything we're not getting it that's why some people feel <laughs> there's nothing but i'm happy it's compulsory over there i really thank you for your time you know the next one didn't really have, <laughs> allow us to have a smooth one uh but um i just hope i i know i learned something and i know people that are going to watch this video will also learn something you know what can you do because with what is happening around us a lot of lawyers are leaving nigeria to other parts of the world so they must understand if i need to continue in my law practice this is what i have to face can i face it so preparing your mind to do these things is very key Unlike uh, you know, one who does not have knowledge of what is uh, the future holds for him or her. So moving to a new jurisdiction, or you don't even know how to start, where to start, it makes it difficult. But when you have information, when you have, you see people who have gone ahead of you, they have done it, they are succeeding. You can put your your chest and say, well, if A can do it, then I can. So that is the essence of uh, bringing in this topic, discussing it, because uh, knowledge is very powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your time. You're uh, welcome. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank just you so I show much. you. So this is my certificate of qualification. Just so I show you. This is certificate of qualification. This is my notary public. Sorry, this one. Once you're a lawyer, you're, you're, you can um, act as a notary public. Okay. And then this is my barristers and solicitors yeah. licensing yeah. certification. Uh. <laughs> yes.